Remember as a kid the first time you learned that there were cheat codes for video games? And although I haven't found a way to install one of these bad boys in World of Warcraft, there are some abilities that are basically cheating. We're here today to give you an update on some of the combos you need to be looking out for in Shadowlands Season 2. We will be breaking it down by melee, caster, and healer to make sure you are ready for everything in 9.1. And speaking of being ready for anything, we got you covered over at Skillcapped. For over a decade, we have been delivering the highest quality PvP guides on the entire internet. Our team of expert pro players have spent countless hours grinding arena and have valuable knowledge and experience to share with you. For prices as low as $4.99 a month, you can get access to hundreds of WoW arena guides designed to improve your skill and rating in PvP. Joining our website will also give you exclusive access to the premium section of our Discord, where you can message pro players directly for any of your specific PvP needs. And with a money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So if you're looking to push rating this season and stay ahead of the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Starting off, we have a few abilities from melee classes that you definitely need to look out for in season two. So you've probably seen a few Twitch clips like this in Shadowlands, or maybe this has happened to you. Jamie, we're gonna need to rewind that clip and look at our team's health bars once again. Obviously, the damage here is pretty busted, but let's break down exactly what is going on. For one, almost all of the damage here is coming from spinning crane kick, but if you logged on a level 60 monk and used the ability on a target dummy, you would be disappointed. Instead, what is going on in these one-shot clips is a combination of a bunch of damage modifiers. For one, it's getting a damage increase from other abilities, because for every target the monk attacks, spinning crane kick will hit 15% harder. This is why you constantly see rank 1 monks tab target pets, because it gives them a stacking damage increase for their burst once they press spinning crane kick. This is further being multiplied by the Calculated Strikes Conduit, which increases the damage even more. Finally, monks have a talent called Dance of chi G, which will sometimes give them a 200% damage increase on their next spinning crane kick whenever they use their chi. So here we have all the damage multipliers together. Regular abilities will stack a damage multiplier on spinning crane kick, which will be increased further with a conduit. Then once the monk gets their Dance of chi G proc, it's time to press go and unleash huge damage. And all of these things together are why you see so many Twitch clips of monks absolutely evaporating the enemy team. Here's the scary thing, they don't really need cooldowns to hit this hard. Of course, the damage could be increased even more with Storm Earth and Fire or Weapons of Order, but there are enough damage multipliers on spinning crane kick alone that these additional damage modifiers aren't as important. So what do you do? For one, you might want to consider making a weak aura for the Dance of chi buff, which you can set up for yourself in the same way we're doing here. This will instantly let you know when any enemy monk in arena has their huge damage proc. If you see this buff, get ready to use a major defensive cooldown, especially if you see the enemy monk use Storm Earth and Fire, or Weapons of Order. With any combination of these buffs active, the damage will be nearly unhealable without major damage mitigation. If you do see Storm, Earth, and Fire, one of the absolute best things you can do is CC the clones, since they can't be broken out of CC even if the monk uses their PvP trinket. This will dramatically reduce the monk's pressure, since each clone hits for 45% of the monk's damage. The rest of the abilities on this list aren't nearly that complicated though. As I'm sure you've noticed by now, Arms Warriors are playing Kyrian again and are doing massive damage during their Spear of Bastion. This is entirely due to a new legendary in 9.1 called the Legion Might, which increases the spear's duration while giving the warrior increased crit. Although spear can be really frustrating to play against, there are a few different forms of counterplay. Some abilities remove the effect entirely, allowing you to get out of its AoE tether. These include Greater Fade, Cloak of Shadows, Netherwalk, Blessing of Protection, Divine Shield, Demonic Gateway, and Feign Death while using the Craven Stratagem Legendary. But even if you don't have any of these spells, the best workaround is simply trading a minor defensive cooldown like Bark Skin if you are a Druid or Alter Time if you are a Mage. You don't want to overcommit defensives to Spear unless it is also paired with Avatar and Warbreaker or if the Warrior's partner is also using major offensive cooldowns. Although rare, some warriors are even playing Necrolord, and one of their covenant abilities is called Conqueror's Banner. This gives their team a massive temporary increase to mastery. Because of its long cooldown, this is usually lined up with other major team-wide offensives, like Wings if they are playing with a Ret Paladin, or Incarnation if they are playing with a Balanced Druid. What this means is that the moment you see the Conqueror's Banner buff, you should be ready to use a major defensive cooldown, because you should assume more CDs will be stacked with it. Just like other abilities on this list, you can track Conqueror's Banner using a weak aura like we have configured here. 
Moving on, everyone's favorite druid ability has made its sweet return in Season 2 with Convoke the Spirits disrupting the meta once again. Towards the end of last season, many feral druids made the shift over to Necrolord due to its bulkiness and its ability to give them huge damage modifiers on their dots with Adaptive Swarm and the Drought of the Deep Focus legendary. Night Fae is making its sweet return in Season 2 as a new legendary was added specifically for Convoke the Spirits, causing it to have a 1 minute cooldown and an increased chance to use an exceptional ability. Well, that sounds terrifying. Although rare, some Resto Druids are even playing Night Fae in Arena, and with access to the same Legendary, their Convoke damage is still really good, especially when used in cat form. Luckily though, Convoke has a few counters, and one of the best counters is Knowledge, and specifically knowing you were playing against a Night Fae Druid before they press Convoke. One of the easiest ways to see if you are playing against a Convoke Feral Druid is to check their buffs. Necrolord Ferals will usually have Fleshcraft and might have a Soulbind buff called Volatile Solvent. On the other hand, Kyrian Druids will have Kindred Spirits. So in case you see either one of these buffs, you will know immediately that they don't have Convoke. The counterplay is still the same, with any Interrupt or CC being able to instantly shut down the cast. So once you have established you are playing against a Night Fae Feral by looking at their buffs, your next step is to actively monitor the cooldown of Convoke. Always assume that they have the Legendary, meaning its cooldown will be 1 minute. Once available, be ready to use interrupts as a team, ideally saving at least one PvP trinket in order to disrupt its cast. If no trinkets or interrupts are available, you need to trade a defensive cooldown as quickly as possible since damage from two ferocious bite crits is often enough to 100 to 0 targets. Next up, surprise surprise, rogues also have some new one-shot combos this season. A new legendary was added in 9.1 for Kyrian rogues called Resounding Clarity, giving them 4 super combo point spenders when they use Echoing Reprimand. This is a bit tricky to explain, but it gives them 4 unique buffs, allowing them to spend different amounts of combo points to act as if they had actually spent 7 combo points. This means that they can use 2 combo points and the legendary will dial it up as if they spent 7. Now that is what I call value. Fortunately, this combo is really easy to spot, since it will spam the rogue instantly with these 4 buffs. Like many abilities on this list, the best reaction is to simply trade defensive cooldowns as quickly as possible. Most of rogue damage happens a global or two after they use their stuns during Shadow Dance. If you or your partner is stunned while Shadow Dance is active and Echoing Reprimand is used, you should anticipate huge incoming damage. Taking a slight detour outside of Kyrian sub rogues, Necrolord Assassination has seen a surge in popularity this season, having their own unique damage setup. Some Assass rogues are playing with deeper stratagem, allowing them to get 7 second kidney shots and more damage on their rupture and in venom. When paired with internal bleeding and a 6% damage increase from a new soulbind proc called Kevin's Oozling, every kidney shot is really scary against Asa rogues. The biggest cooldown you need to look out for is Vendetta, which when paired with all of these other damage modifiers gives Asa rogues huge damage during kidney shot. This patch however, your defensive response needs to be a bit more calculated, since Assassination has a new PvP talent called Hematoxin, which will allow them to shiv on a 40% healing reduction. What this means is that you should avoid using healing based defensive cooldowns into rogues unless you are 100% sure you don't have Hematoxin since it will dramatically counter their effects. Instead, trade efficiently with damage reduction cooldowns whenever you get kidney shot with full bleeds and vendetta. Moving on, we have some caster spells that you should definitely look out for this season. The first is Ring of Fire, which you probably have already seen if you've played against a fire mage in 9.1. As the name suggests, this spell creates a ring of fire on the floor that causes damage over time based on the target's total health pool. This means that the damage will be proportionately higher on targets with more HP. The debuff will refresh itself if the target passes through the ring more than once. Good mages will always use this ability on stunned targets, since it almost always guarantees the target will be burned by the ring for at least one cycle of dot ticks. The reason why this ability is so important is because it gives fire mages an additional win condition when combustion is on cooldown. Because the damage from Ring of Fire is based on total HP, it doesn't get modified by any of the mage's buffs, meaning combustion or rune of power don't make it hit any harder. Before this patch, you only had to worry about fire mage damage during combust. Now with Ring of Fire, mages have another win condition to combo with their team's stuns. Fortunately, not all hope is lost though, since Ring of Fire has some specific counters. For one, the cast itself can be interrupted, which obviously shuts down all of its damage. It is also possible that the mage whiffs their ring, meaning your next job is to simply avoid walking into it, which years of raid grinding should have prepared you for. If you do manage to get hit by ring, the dot it leaves on you can be dispelled, which is definitely worth it since it burns a huge chunk of your HP. 
Speaking of Mage, Arcane has seen a slight increase in popularity this season. Although not nearly as popular as Fire, Arcane has a new true one-shot combo with Arcanosphere, one of the few skill shots in WoW PvP. This spell gets channeled by the Mage and then launched out in a straight line in front of their character. Unlike Ring of Fire, its damage does get increased by spell modifiers, so both Arcane Power, Rune of Power, and any Trinket proc will increase its damage. This leads to some absolutely insane burst when the cast can be successfully completed while multiple damage modifiers are up. Fortunately though, it is incredibly telegraphed due to having a really long cast time and avoidable projectile pathing. Your goal should first be to interrupt the cast, but if that's not possible, you should move as quickly as you can out of its pathing. If neither of those options are available, then you absolutely need to trade your biggest damage mitigation cooldown if the mage also uses arcane power. Moving on, last time I checked, PvP stands for player versus player, but Shadow Priests this season give you the opportunity to practice some mythic dungeon mechanics with a new PvP talent. Void Volley is a newly added talent in 9.1 that causes projectiles to shoot out of the priest every time Void Form is entered. These will cause damage and make affected players get coiled momentarily. Void Form can be entered in two ways. The most common way is with Void Eruption, which unless talented has a cast time. Alternatively, Void Form will be entered instantly if the Priest is also playing with the Megalomania PvP talent, allowing them to use Surrender to Madness. When you see Void Eruption being cast, get ready for Void Volley to start. The projectiles spawn randomly and have a visible circle on the ground indicating where they will land. As long as you can dodge the circles on the ground, you can avoid its damage and CC entirely. And speaking of being avoided entirely, are Warlocks still in the game? I think there's still a class, right? Right? All jokes aside, despite being a rarity these days in Arena, Warlocks have a new damage combo you need to be aware of. Both Demo and Destro Warlocks are sometimes playing Necrolord, giving them access to Decimating Bolt and its new legendary called Shard of Annihilation. This will cause their Decimating Bolt cast to increase the damage on their next three Demon Bolt or Incinerating casts. With additional damage modifiers, this leads to some massive damage. One of the best counterplays to this combo is to dispel the buff from the Shard of Annihilation Legendary. Once Decimating Bolt is used, the Warlock will have three stacks of this buff, which can be removed by any offensive magic dispel. Otherwise, you should anticipate huge incoming damage. The Demon Bolts from Demo normally have a long cast time, but can be made instant with a proc, so you might not have anything to actually interrupt. Incinerate, on the other hand, will always have a cast time and therefore can be interrupted in order to mitigate damage. And by the way, its damage is huge during CDs. Finally, let's go over some healer abilities that you really need to be paying attention to. First up, we have Healing Tide Totem from Resto Shamans. Although they've had this ability the entire expansion, it wasn't until last patch that they got the Living Tide PvP talent to make it absolutely broken. Take a look at the health bar of the warrior in this clip. The Shaman will sit nearly 20 seconds of CC, but with Healing Tide ticking, his warrior will be absolutely fine despite being low once the CC chain starts. The strength of Healing Tide with this new PvP talent makes it a major cooldown that you need to be aware of. Luckily, just like any totem in the game, it can be killed quite easily. Many players, even rank 1 teams, sometimes fail to do this, and as we just saw, that can be a huge mistake when you're trying to land a kill. Think about it this way, you can spend 2 seconds trying to kill it with one attack, or spend the next 12 seconds hitting a target that is immortal. The choice seems obvious. Resto Druids also have their own god mode cooldown with only a 30 second CD. Just like Healing Tide, Scenarian Ward has been part of the metagame since the expansion's launch. Now, however, with higher item levels and more bulk in general, the spell is pretty busted. Its healing over time effect cannot be dispelled and can even be extended by 10 seconds with Swift Mend due to the Verdant Infusion Legendary. This means that Sen Ward can be refreshed twice using Swift Mend, even when the spell itself is on cooldown, since the initial refresh will bump its duration to 18 seconds, while the cooldown of Swift Mend in order to refresh is just 15 seconds. Once the buff is ticking, there's not much you can do about it. One possible counterplay is to dispel the druid's other hots, specifically rejuvenation and regrowth, since these will allow the druid to use Swift Mend while also increasing their healing due to mastery. Otherwise, swapping targets can be an incredibly efficient way to play around Sen Ward. By pressuring a new target, not only do you avoid having to damage through insanely high HPS, but you also force the enemy druid to swap all of their hots to a new target, which can sometimes catch them off guard and cause them to fall behind. Oof, that was quite the journey, but here we are wrapping up some of the most broken abilities in Shadowlands Season 2. 
Once again, if you're looking to learn more about your class or if you want access to our world-class arena commentaries, head over to skillcap.com slash wow. Our team of pro players is hard at work grinding the arena ladder, learning the ins and outs of the meta in order to give exclusive lessons to you. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you soon.